Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. He's the worst president in the history of our country, the most incompetent. He's a very big danger to our country. And the only way they think they can win this election is by doing exactly what they're doing right now, win it in the courts because they can't win it at the ballot box. So we're going to show them that, oh, we're going to fight. We're going to fight, he says. That's former President Trump from last hour. We carried it for you on the Faulkner Focus. And he was calling out President Biden while promising to fight after yesterday's unprecedented conviction. Trump's campaign is already using the conviction to fundraise. Well, actually, they both are. But this is interesting. Let's take a look at the website now labeling the former president a political prisoner. And it appears to be working with the website crashing shortly after Trump was convicted due to, we think, a wave of donations. They also were changing their page. Could have been a combination of both they were updating. What we do know is there was a halt. And people were all over social media saying, hey, we want to donate. And then boom, it went back online. Trump's campaign says they raised $34.8 million in donations after the verdict. Kaylee, let's dig into the money. The critical part about that to me, yeah, the number's big, and he's raised more than that before, but 485,000 different donors. To me, that is critical because as time goes on, you know, we've, we've always seen this. There's going to be a ramp up maybe through the sentencing July 11th, maybe through the Republican National Convention. But you've got somebody who can raise a lot of money, too, and that is Joe Biden. So what happens when it kind of that wave sort of, you know, goes yeah. a little bit hazy? You make a great point. You know, fundraising oscillates. Uh, who knows that better than Joe Biden, who, who's winning the fundraising battle? And then Trump came and trounced him with a fundraiser that doubled the record that he right. broke, even though Joe Biden still had with cash on hand. Um, I want to underscore how big this is, though. Shane Goldmacher of The New York Times put this up about this number, this 30 plus million dollar number. Trump announces 34.8 million fundraising haul after guilty verdict. For some perspective, that is even more than the 26 million in a day that Biden raised after naming Kamala Harris as vice president. Ken Vogel also does this for a living. He says in two decades covering campaign money, I've never seen anything like this. The Trump campaign says it raised uh, the 34 million in the one day, less than one day since the verdict comes out, with 29.7% of donors being at the WinRed platform. So these guys do this for a living. This is enormous, enormous. Mm -hmm. Is it a sign of energy? I would also just add on to that Trump's finding some unlikely wow. allies. Susan Collins came out in his defense. Mitch McConnell came out in his defense. These aren't traditional, robust Trump defenders. So he's finding some political tailwinds here. Yeah, and, and when you talk about, you know, how many people go to the rallies and all of that, we're all in a situation uh, where we're watching the economy just hobble along. Some of it, I mean, if you're rich right now and Wall Street's treating you great, that's good. But if you actually have to go and pay for your own groceries at the grocery store, it's biting you. And so that, that really plays a role. And, Kennedy, I want to get back to something you said last segment. He has to do what Biden refuses to do now, and Trump is good at it. Talk about it in a way that you know you feel their pain. Talk about what you know you can fix because you've done it before if you're Trump. Yeah, and, and Joe Biden was supposed to be the empathizer in chief. You know, it's like Amtrak Joe is supposed to feel everybody's pain. But meanwhile, he goes on and does interviews where he belittles the interviewer when they bring up inflation. And now is a, a very good time for the former president to lay out what is happening and what people are feeling because they know that better than anyone. There is nothing more motivating than trying to take care of yourself and your family and not being able to. And when you've got the people in the White House saying, the economy is great, everything is perfect, we're doing everything right, it's the best presidency in modern history, it's not working for them. Then, you know, President Trump, he can stick to the hits. He can talk about inflation. He can talk about immigration. And he can talk about aspirational wealth that people should be able to engage in, but they can't in a high taxation environment where the federal government and state prosecutors are trained on political opponents that they don't like. That could be anyone at any given moment. And those few points, that message will resonate all the way through November.
So, Jonathan, I want to hit you with this. This is something that the, the former president said last hour. He said it's very important far beyond me, meaning this case, this trial, and, and the guilty verdict against him on 34 counts. He said this cannot be allowed to happen to other presidents. It should never be allowed to happen in the future. But this is far beyond me. This is bigger than Trump. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than my presidency. Uh, the nation watches what happened here in this case. Mm -hmm. What do you think they see outside of Manhattan? Because you said, well, it's going to be different, not only in a blue state, but in this cauldron of blueness, if you will. I think this is where it comes down to the DNA of Americans, that there are certain things that resonate with Americans, regardless of where you are. It's sort of the reason why, despite of all of our divisions, when the Democrats were pushing to pack the Supreme Court, the needle didn't move. I mean, the, the public remained opposed to that, even though many of them didn't like the conservative majority. I expect a lot of them will not like this. I don't see huh. how a reasonable person could look at this case and not say that this is a political prosecution. And we're not used to political prosecutions in the United States. It's been a long time. You got to go back to sort of John Adams when you saw this type of thing happen. Uh, and so the question I think is going to be as we play this out and, the Amer and it galvanizes Americans on either side, um, what's going to be the key issue going into that polling place? And this may jump to the top of that list. Interesting. Uh, just hearing you talk about what could happen with the U.S. Supreme Court packing the court. So, Emily, I'm sure you caught it uh, this week because we thought we were going to hear from the president about this actual trial. Uh, but now it's being reported that we won't. We'll see what <clears throat> happens going forward. But while that talk was going on, the president promised to put more liberals on the court to, to what he said, balance it out, if you will, the U.S. Supreme Court. What could that look like going forward? Well, first, there would have to be a vacancy. And I think he would have been better stewarded of his time if he had done what President Trump had done, which was start um, appointing judges throughout the federal circuit immediately. But he, he didn't. I mean, he's failed on every front, just like he failed to put ambassadors in. I mean, he has wasted his three years. He has wasted this time because he's been busy fighting the beast. To which brings me to my point that Americans do not like unfair fights. The most staggering number to me was not necessarily the incredible haul of donations, but the almost three out of 10 donors who had not donated before. That is a huge galvanizing that occurred. And to me, the most important moment, which Trump absolutely nailed, was after the verdict was read, was, was read when he came out of the courthouse and he said, it's going to be okay. There were a lot of Americans yeah. that were feeling dejected in that moment. There were a lot of people that saw this farcical trial for what it was, the political witch hunt for what it was, and he came out and said, it's okay. And that moment, that's the cue from the bride, the cue from your dad where you say, okay, it is going to be okay, and now let's galvanize, let's donate as he called for, but now what remains to be heralded is stewarding it appropriately. Get out and vote. We need to really harness the GOP messaging moving forward of how does this mean for actually putting your ballot into the box? That's what matters next. Yeah, and doing it early. I mean, making that play uh, the Democrats make every time around. Some yeah. states as much as 50 days out from election day. You got to vote yeah, early that's what I mean. uh, in yeah. order to to really push this forward uh, and vote your vote your best interest. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights. You need to watch this if you struggle with feeling heard. What's something people don't know about unlocking their desires? It's simpler than you think. Picture this. New York, rush hour, everybody's hustling, but sometimes you just gotta stop and ask for what you want. Jesus laid it out pretty clear. Ask and it's yours. Seek and you'll find. Knock and that door's gonna swing wide open. Now, I ain't talking about whispering into the wind here. I'm talking about the kind of asking with conviction, the kind of seeking like it's Black Friday at Macy's, and the kind of knocking that says, hey, I mean business. So what's the real secret? It's all about taking action with a capital A. You gotta be bold, you gotta be persistent, and most importantly, you gotta believe it's already yours. That's not just spirituality, that's street smart wisdom right there. So next time you're aiming for something, remember, just ask, seek, knock. And hey, don't just stand there, go get what you want.